Hey, welcome to another FinTips episode. My name is Dustin Tibbetts, financial advisor with Jazz Wealth. Hope you'll check us out at jazzwealth.com, see how we can help. Well, these videos are meant to be short, simple tips, and today we're gonna honor that, and we're going to uh, kind of cover an article that was written by Nikki Knack, talking about 10 easy ways to cut your expenses. And uh, I happen to agree with a lot of these, so I thought we would review, go over it really quick. Now, the idea for me is to help you get your dough straight. If we can do that, then you can invest successfully and you won't have to stress about your investments. So let's talk about some of them. Some of them you're probably not gonna like, including number one, her suggestion was to cut back on cell phone expenses. Now, she says that a cell phone is a cell phone. You should go and just pick a cell phone a company and a plan. I tend to be on the side of, what the hell are we spending so much money on these phones for? Why are they so expensive? Quit spending money on a thousand dollar cell phone. Just tell me, why do you need a thousand dollar cell phone? You don't. What I do, and I'll be perfectly honest with you, if you ever meet me in person, uh, you're gonna laugh. <laughs> so um, my family, we use Metro PCS. It's 80 bucks a month and we never seem to have any problems. The only time we had a problem was we were in the sticks of North Carolina and I don't think anybody had service anyways but I buy a $100 phone every year. I go to the same store, I know the people there, they know I'm coming, they have, we do it so I can transfer everything, it's no problem. 15 minutes, I'm in and out. For $100, I have just bought a brand new phone that the camera's good, I don't notice any difference, everything's fine, it works great. When it starts to slow down, takes about a year, I'll just go get another one. It would take me 10 years to pay for one Apple iPhone. Apple just came out with their new phones and, holy cow, guys, cell phone, quit it. Just go buy an off-brand phone. You don't even care what, you just, you just want it to do the job, right? So cell phones, and I agree with that. Number two, watch what you eat and where you eat it. Now, the uh, article talks about cutting back on eating out here, and I'm one of those that says if you plan to eat out, then go eat out. If you just randomly eat out because you don't wanna cook, that's a budget buster right there. So I want you to budget that ahead of time. We did a great budgeting class. It's on our website, it's up at the top. It's free for customers, but it's $65 if you're not one of our customers. And we did a great, great class on this. And basically, I don't care what you wanna spend your money on as long as you pre-plan for it. If you pre-plan your budget and you find out you don't have any money to eat out, well then you'll make adjustments and anytime someone goes into their budget, that works for me because you end up budgeting your money who cares what you spend it on? I have a customer that spends it on gambling once a week with his buddies in Vegas. He lives out there. And uh, I'll just tell you, he spends over $1,000 a week gambling uh, and expects to lose it. If he makes money, great. But he budgets it. He's not going bankrupt because of it. Number three, debt consolidation. You gotta look into this. This is like the most boring thing that you can do. But honestly, if you have credit cards at 16, 17, 18, now 20 plus percent interest rates, you gotta look at how you can start to save on that interest rate. It may be as simple as calling and asking for a lower rate. That's probably not gonna work if you've already done that. So it may mean that you need to start transferring some things to lower, uh, lower interest rate credit cards or just consider a personal loan to pay it all off. I know that's not the greatest advice, but the interest rate is lower. So when you look at your credit card, here's what I want you to think. When you see 16% interest, I want you to think $1,600 a year. When you see 20% interest, I want you to think $2,000 a year. It's probably not the case, but I want you to think that, and that should motivate you to go and uh, do something about that, okay? So get rid of that credit card debt, even if it means moving it to a different type of debt with a lower interest rate, just so you pay less over time. Number two, or number four, <laughs> reduce electricity and water expenses. That's a tough one. I'm in Florida, so we're, we got the air condition on all the time. But you know, there's little things you can do. You notice when a light's on too long, I've become a little bit of a stickler about that. But those little things add up, and we're talking pennies here probably over the long run. But if you're someone who's out of the house all day, it may make great sense to go get a programmable thermostat and say, raise the temperature just a little. Don't raise it so it's so hot that then at the end of the day, it has to work harder to cool off. Just raise it a little bit and then bring it back down and play with it. See how high you can bring it and how you can bring it back down so that you don't end up spending a lot of money. What we do is uh, at uh, it, it starts at 5.30. We don't change it for the time difference. So it's either 5.30 or 6.30. Our system cuts off totally. 
By the time we're all awake, the temperature's already starting to rise. What do we care? It doesn't matter. It starts back, uh, turning back on to bring the temperature down at about three o'clock in the afternoon because we need it here in Florida. And so little things. I noticed the savings. It wasn't a lot, but I noticed the savings and I don't even have to think about it because it's pre-programmed. Number five, she says, have a kitchen garden. You know what that is? I don't know what that is. A kitchen garden. I think it means when you grow your herbs and spices and things in your kitchen, that's just not going to be me. I'm sorry. That, that one's not going to fall into my wheelhouse. But if you can do it and you want to do that in your kitchen, I know they look good. I think they look good. I just, I'm not into it. Number two, you got to work on quitting those habits. You know what I'm talking about. If you budget to smoke cigarettes, is that okay? I said they had a guy that budgets to gamble. If you budget to smoke cigarettes, is, is that all right? I mean, you're going to do what you're going to do, but do you know how much cigarettes are costing you? About $2,500 a year. If you smoke, what is it, a pack a day? Uh, that's seven bucks a day. You got $210 a month, $2,500 a year. Does that help in any way? Does that help you want to quit smoking? I know the alternative is to go buy patches and medications. Well, those cost money too. Is there a way you can try to cut back? You might want to think about that. Number seven, she says, cut back on insurance premium. Uh, cut back on insurance premiums. I disagree with this one. I think you pay up for insurance. You do not want to find yourself in a position where you had a $5,000 deductible on something and it goes wrong and you can't pay that bill. I don't like that. I think you should shop around for better premiums, better insurance with better coverage. I don't like the idea of cutting back because it generally means you go online and you start unchecking boxes so your premium goes down. Well, by you unchecking, you might be unchecking the very thing that you need if something goes wrong, especially in the auto uh, category, okay? Okay, number eight, hold off the urge to buy a new automobile. New car? Absolutely not. There is zero reason to buy a new car. I don't care how it makes you feel. We did a class, that budgeting class I mentioned a minute ago, where I will actually show you dollar for dollar how to buy a car, what year, how long to finance it, what type of car, everything, everything, how to go about it so that at any point along the life of you owning that car and having debt on it, if you choose, you'll be able to sell it for what it's worth and won't be upside down. Follow that rule in that budgeting class and whether you pay cash for a car or you finance it, you will always be able to sell it for theoretically what you have into it and it's more focused on debt if you had a loan on that one. It's very simple. It works on every car. It even works better on the uh, nicer cars and so it gives you the exact answer as to how to do that and end up with no car payment. It, was start, it kind of stems from a, a school project I did. Nine, reduce expenses on weekend, right? Reduce weekend expenses. Here's a trick, work on the weekends, right? You're not doing anything on the weekends and so you're spending money. Me, I work on the weekends. I make these videos. I do all kinds of catch up work. I don't spend any money. Now that doesn't mean you should work all the time. Maybe it means that you're working in your garden. Maybe it means you're cleaning your garage. You gotta keep yourself busy because you will spend money. Everybody goes out to eat. Incredible how many people go to restaurants on the weekends. Why would you wanna go when everybody else is there? That's like we live in Florida and we go to Disney World on a Tuesday in the middle of January, right? January is the best time to go to Disney World, in my opinion. So reduce your weekend expenses. Do stuff during the weekdays so you have less time, which means you spend less money. And number 10, this one's sort of aggressive, uh, but hey, I've had customers even do this. Smaller home. Oops. Do you need a smaller home? You trying to save money? What are you trying to do? Do you really want it? Do you have a big goal in mind? that you want to save money for? If that's the case, then I suggest a smaller home because you want to get there as fast as possible. If you're planning a big, I don't know, retirement, you want to go travel then, you're planning on starting a big business, then you might need to do these things to sort of back down on your expenses. So I'd like to thank uh, Nikki Knack for writing that article, helping us out a little bit as far as a concept. What do you think about some of these topics? Would you do all of them, assuming you have the dirty habit of smoking? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Why should you choose Jazz Wealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. 
best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interest comes before ours.